If you've ever worked in Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, you're probably familiar with the concept of a mask. A mask is basically cutting a hole in something so that you can only see what's underneath it through that hole, in a sense. Um, it works a little bit differently in Flash, and you kind of have to see what's happening with it before you can understand what it's doing. So right now what I want to have happen in this animation is as the flashlight moves over, I want to reveal the owl and the star and the moon. And before we can do that, let's go ahead and take a look at, what, at what's happening on each of these layers. So the flashlight layer, if I turn it on and off, it's just a flashlight symbol and it has a motion tween and it goes down and at the 50th frame, it comes back up. And then we have an owl layer, and that includes the stars and the moon as well, and then a simple background layer. Now, if I turn the flashlight into a mask, what it's going to do is it's going to, wherever the flashlight originally was, it's going to be like a hole. It's going to hide everything else that's a part of that mask, and we're only going to see all of that content when this part of the flashlight moves over it. So let's see what, how to do that. I can right-click on this layer, and change it to a mask and it automatically moved the owl under that mask. You can see these little icons here to the left of the layer name that show that this is the mask and then this is a masked item. And if it doesn't turn into a masked item, you can right click on it and go down to oops, the very bottom. Or let's say it looks like this, it's a regular owl. I can drag it underneath that mask layer and it turns it into a masked item. So here's the problem. First of all, if I don't have those layers locked, it doesn't look like it did anything at all. A mask will only show up if you have those layers locked. But we're still seeing a problem because I no longer see my flashlight. But watch what happens. As it moves over the owl, you can see it's like a hole that we can see through to see the owl that's a masked item. So we're kind of there. The problem becomes we still want to see the flashlight, so we're going to actually make a duplicate of the flashlight layer. So we'll go ahead and take that layer and drag it down to the new layer icon. And now we have a flashlight copy. And I'm going to right click and unmask that because we just want that to be a normal flashlight. So we'll lock those masked layers and we have a problem. It, we can see the flashlight now, but we can no longer see the mask. So here's the tricky thing. You actually want to have this copy underneath the mask and the masked items. So I'll move it down and make sure it's not a masked item. And now when we're over here, we can see both the cut through or the hole to the content where we're seeing the owl, but we can also see the flashlight behind it. So that's what we wanted to have happen with that masked layer. You don't always need two copies, but it's a good idea to understand how that works so that you can play with it to get it to where you want it to be. So again, a couple things to reiterate. First, pay attention to what each of your layers looks like. If I make this a little bit bigger and double click on this layer, oops, this is where you can go to layer properties and you can see that this one is a masked layer. If I double click on this one, this one is a masked layer. And if I double click on this one, this is just a normal layer. And that's what we want to have happen. And you can tell visually by these little icons to the left of the layer name. And then also, if your mask isn't working, try to rearrange the order of it with, well, with one exception. The mask always is on the top and the masked items should always be underneath it. And make sure that the layers are locked because if they're not locked, again, it's going to look like nothing happened.